So another state is directly defying what the Supreme Court just said and is passing a ban on so-called assault weapons. So we need to talk about what just happened. But real quick before you jump this video, if you agree that rifle bans and these types of semi-automatic bans are clearly unconstitutional, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. Also, I wanna give a shout out to one of the main supporters of this channel, which is Kershaw Knives. Kershaw Knives makes amazing knives. I carry one of their knives every single day from my EDC. I carry the Kershaw Iridium knife. Amazing knives, high quality knives, and they just don't break the bank. So again, if you want a quality EDC knife, check out Kershaw Knives. If you go to Kershaw's website and you use the code 2024SCHOLAR40, you can get 40% off of your order. And the only caveat to that is essentially if they're already running a sale, oftentimes their sales are better than my code. So just keep that in mind. So again, thank you to Kershaw Knives for sponsoring and supporting this 2A content. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we need to talk about how some politicians in the state of Colorado have gone completely tyrannical and have launched a comprehensive attack on the second amendment. Colorado's legislator is actively attempting to pass an assault weapons ban, which, oh, by the way, just passed the state house. Essentially, Colorado aims to follow in the steps of states like New York and California, who have also put in place these types of rifle bans. Colorado wants to be the next state that bans these types of rifles. And what Colorado aims to do is ban the future sale and purchase of every single semi-automatic rifle. They are doing this through House Bill 24-1292, which was brought by Representatives Hernandez and Epps. So let's break down what this bill does what just happened in the state house and what is gonna happen going forward and what we all need to do to stop this. Now the rifle ban bill essentially defines terms like assault weapon and prohibits any person from manufacturing, importing, purchasing, selling, offering for sale, or transferring ownership of these so-called assault weapons. A person in violation of the prohibitions will be charged with a first time penalty of $250,000 and $500,000 for any subsequent violation. So not only is there going to be a ban on the sale and purchase of the most common rifles in the US, but you buying, selling, or transferring them would essentially result in a quarter of a million dollar fine and up to a half a million dollar fine if you do it a second time. The bill targets specific firearms through a list of makes and models. It also targets firearms based on their characteristics. Now, this is similar to what California did with their whole structure. Originally, California put in place what is known as the Roberti Roos list, and that is a list of specific firearms that are banned by name. And then similar like, you know, copies or imitations of those rifles are also banned. Then California went in after having the makes and models list. It didn't ban enough fire types of firearms. So then they had a characteristics ban. And that is similar to what Colorado is doing here as well. They just are doing it all in one stroke of a pen. They're having a makes and models ban and then a characteristics ban. However, Colorado learned from all the holes that were in the state of California's ban and other state bans, and they include broader language to prevent the types of compliant rifles that have come on the market in states like California. This bill in Colorado states that semi-automatic rifle that has a capacity to accept a detachable magazine, or that may be readily modified to accept a detachable magazine, and has one or more of the following characteristics, essentially will be a banned rifle. They say A, a pistol grip or a thumb hole stock, B, any feature capable of functioning as a protruding grip that can be held by the non-trigger hand, C, a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock that is otherwise foldable or adjustable in a manner that operates to reduce the length, size, or any other dimension, or otherwise enhances the ability to conceal the weapon, D, a muzzle brake, E, a functional grenade launcher or flare launcher. It's funny how they always throw that in there as if people are doing that actively. Uh, F, a shroud attached to a barrel or that partially or completely encircles the barrel, allowing the bearer to hold the firearm with the non-trigger hand without being burned, but excluding a slide that includes the barrel. So there essentially is just your characteristic that would ban almost every single fire, a semi-automatic rifle with a detachable magazine. And then just to make sure they're covering all their bases and banning every single semi-automatic rifle, they say, G, a threaded barrel. This language in the bill has enough broad terms and language to essentially ban every single AR-15, AK, and similar variant or almost every single semi-automatic rifle that has a detachable magazine. 
This language, in fact, is very much broader than what we see in other states like California Penal Code Section 30515. This Colorado language goes so far as to ban every rifle that has a barrel shroud and every single rifle that has a threaded barrel. They also include a definition section where they say they're going to ban tactical features. They state that the tactical features on assault weapons are not merely cosmetic and they are not minor. But the absurd political statements in this bill are not isolated to just saying some features are so tactical and lethal that these types of firearms need to be banned. The bill also goes on to state that assault weapons are not suitable for self-defense and are not well suited for hunting, sporting, or any other purpose other than mass incidents. Now, interestingly, here the state legislator is making the statement that the most commonly owned rifles, you know, that are owned by law-abiding people in the millions are simply not suitable for any purpose at all, including self-defense, hunting, or sporting. They provide zero analytical evidence to support that blanket statement that they're making, and that's because they have zero evidence. The hard truth for these gun controllers is that these firearms are owned by the millions and are owned by millions of law-abiding people for purposes expressly like self-defense, hunting, and recreation. But Colorado thinks that all they can do is make false statements about how these firearms are used, and then they can just outright ban them. Now, then the legislator also goes on to try to soften the whole unconstitutional nature of this bill by saying that, well, we're only going to ban the future sale and the future purchase of these rifles. The bill states that in section C, it is critical to limit the prospective sale of assault weapons and accessories while permitting existing legal owners to retain the assault weapons they currently own. Because of this language, you would be able to possess the rifles that you already have, but any future purchase or sale of them will be cut off. But don't be fooled by this language. As we all know, numerous times in other states, they will grandfather in these types of firearms or these types of items like magazines, but then just a few years later, they will go back in, they will introduce a new bill or try to make an amendment to also ban those grandfathered items. Oftentimes they will say, well, we need to close the quote unquote loophole, which is not a loophole. They grandfather in this language and then they will say, well, we got to close this loophole because all these grandfathered rifles or items are suddenly responsible for all the crime that is happening in our liberal cities. Now, of course, in this bill, they also have an exemption for certain you know, individuals in certain groups like law enforcement agencies and active military. Oftentimes, gun controllers will include this in their bill to try to keep the support of law enforcement, you know, keep them on their side so that they will enforce their gun control. However, to their credit, the county sheriffs of Colorado have come out and spoke against this bill. They're opposing this bill. So that's really good, you know, good on the sheriffs in Colorado who are fighting back with the people. But that's generally what's going on with this statewide rifle ban in the state of Colorado. And now we also received news that the bill has passed through the state house with a 35 to 27 vote. The bill will now head to the Senate and will head for a debate and a vote. And the hope is that it does not pass in the Senate. But it definitely seems like there is a strong movement in the state of Colorado with a bunch of politicians, probably supported by Everytown, Giffords, and Moms Demand Action, who are pushing to pass this bill. Now, one thing that I do want to note with this bill is the fact that it is directly defying what the Supreme Court recently just said, not just in the Heller decision, but also their recent 6-3 decision in the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association versus Bruin case. The Supreme Court has outlined that not only can a state not categorically ban firearms that are in common use, but also the government's restriction like this must be justified by the government with historical evidence dating back to 1791. What Justice Thomas in the Bruin decision are stating very clearly is that states like Colorado and other governments cannot simply just say public policies or public interest support banning this type of firearm or these types of items. Instead, they have to justify their restriction on the Second Amendment or in our Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, you know, using relevant history dating back to 1791. And in this bill language, you see zero historical references or evidence at all. Instead, you simply see a bunch of vague public policy statements and assumptions that are made by these legislators. The fact that the Colorado legislator did not even do a single historical analysis as required by the Supreme Court in the Bruin decision means that this bill should have been thrown out immediately. Now, currently there's a bunch of awesome groups in Colorado that are actively fighting against this. You have the Rocky Mountain Gun Owners Association and then also NAGR who are actively trying to fight against this assault weapons ban. So again, go support them, go check them out. And if you're in Colorado, I highly recommend that you get engaged in this issue. Keep your eyes closely on what is developing on this issue because if this passes the Senate, it's probably gonna get signed into law. And you know, you also might wanna be having some funds, you know, on the back burner just in case this passes so you can purchase rifles because 
You don't want to just assume, hey, we're just going to litigate this after the fact. Take it from someone in California. We are in a 10 year multi you know, level battle with this whole California rifle ban that's been struck down by lower courts, but we're still dealing with all the litigation. So it's really hard to fight these things once they are passed. Make sure it doesn't pass. That's your best bet. So that's currently what's happening in Colorado. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below and I will try to answer the best of my ability. Also, if you like this video and you like support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to like, comment, and subscribe. All those things help to fuel the algorithm and it signals to YouTube that you guys see value in these videos and in this type of two-way news. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and never forget this nation was built by armed scholars and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.